Hi, I'm Scott Jacobson, Product Marketing Director here at Cadence Design Systems in charge of Ethernet Verification IP products. Today we're going to talk about the evolution of Ethernet. We're going to break this down into a three-part discussion. Well, the first part is going to go back in time and, and maybe bring back some fond memories, maybe some painful memories, but it's going to be back. What happened? What did the world, what did the world look like before Ethernet came about? How did people communicate? How did they print documents? How did all of that stuff kind of happen? Then we're going to talk about the, the evolution of Ethernet. You know, uh, at the first definition of Ethernet, and how it has, it has progressed, right? And then we're going to talk about today's Ethernet. This is not your grandfather's Ethernet. Today's Ethernet is a completely different animal that has evolved, changed, adapted, uh, progressed in ways that were never even expected from the original definition of Ethernet. So, so in the beginning, today we're going to talk about, I'm going to call it the, the, the world before um, before Ethernet. Let's just call this one in the beginning. In the beginning, the world, if you wanted to communicate and use your computer to print with, there was a couple of things you were faced with. The first one was the whole world of information at that time was pay-per-use services and every one of those services you had to dial up to in order to get access to them. Things like Dow Jones News Service, things like CompuServe, things like uh, uh, Usenet groups. Uh, so Usenet groups were the, one of the original forum uh, architects for what became the internet forums. Usenet groups were formed around BBSs, so you had to dial up Usenet and then you had to log on to these BBSs and you had to go into those forums then in order to have discussions with other people with their forum posts and whatnot. So that whole world was a very, uh, very uh, singular point-to-point -point world. You had to dial up one connection, go uh, get your information. You wanted to go to another uh, source of information. You wanted to go from Dow Jones. You wanted to go to CompuServe. You had to close that connection. You had to open up CompuServe's connection. You stopped paying Dow Jones. You now pay CompuServe. So these, this was the kind of world we lived in. There was the single point um, connection from you as, as a consumer to the sources of information that you wanted to get a hold of. And then um, one of the most revolutionary initial or early uh, evolutions of the information age came around with AOL, America Online, when it took this command line based interface to Dow Jones and CompuServe and uh, Usenet groups and made it a graphical user interface so all of the information could be presented graphically. And that became a, a layer on top of the way information was gathered that became much more useful and, and was adopted by a lot more people. Um, so behind all of that, so that's the way the news services were architected, that's the way you got your information. But the thing that allowed you to make those connections were modems. Everything was dial-up back in those days. Remember back in the days, I remember, you know, when I had a first, my first 300 baud modem, 300 words per second, that's the equivalent of 300 baud, 300 words per second. Heck, I thought 300 words per second, that's really exciting. I can only type like 30 words per second, then I've got some errors in that, right? This was 300 words per minute. I said, this is absolutely stunningly fast. And all of my connections to Dow Jones and CompuServe and Usenet groups, just going to be blazing. Well, then it went to 1200 baud and whatnot. And so the, the single point world just kind of got faster single point connections. And if you wanted to print something, that was a whole nother ball game. It had a whole nother set of point to point standards. You had RS-232 connections, if you remember the DB25 connectors, going down to Fry's to find these uh, serial printer cables. Um, and the, the Centronics parallel ports, the, the big wide um, parallel uh, ports for connecting to your, to your uh, printer so that you could use your RS-232 port to connect to your modem. So you can actually then, with a 232 port and a parallel port, you could use the parallel port for the printer and the 232 port to connect to the data services. So this was the world. Everything was point to point. People got information, but it wasn't really shared and it wasn't really gathered uh, in a very uniform way. This, this is the world that drove part of the thinking behind the evolution of Ethernet 
which we'll talk about in the next section. For more information about Ethernet Verification IP products, please visit cadence.com and go to the Verification IP page. Thank you very much.